Community Kitchen is proudly brought to you by Gemini Catering Equipment at gemcat.com.au. Tonight's episode of Community Kitchen is proudly supported by the Builders Arms Hotel on Gertrude Street, Fitzroy. Join them for a pot in the public bar, a meal in the bistro, or pop in to the Builders' hidden dining room, Moon Underwater. kitchen, John Saffran stops by to cook Master Ball soup. We have a chat about his new book and Al Parkinson sings us a song. Hello, this is Community Kitchen and I'm Laura Davis. We're at the Builders Arms in Fitzroy with John Saffran. And we're going to be cooking matzo, matzo ball. ball soup. Yeah, matzo ball soup. More the, the matzo balls. The soup is a bit anticlimactic in that it's packaged soup. That's okay. But packaged kosher soup, so there's a bit of atmos there with that. I like that these eggs that you brought, um, I'm not sure if you can see, oh. but uh, they've, they've specified that there is one bird per square metre of bird <laughs> farm, and you can scan there to, uh, for a live chook cam. What do you think maybe the next level of, for like, we went from uh, like cage eggs to barn laid, which is just yeah, the free range, yeah. to free range. Do you, we need chickens to like willingly give up their eggs to us before we're allowed to eat them? Well, all I know is no matter what you do, there's a, if someone who's into animals yeah. is always like angry. Yeah. Should we, should we make some <laughs> matzo balls? Yeah, so, so I chose matzo balls, so I just thought, you know, exciting yes. for a, you know, a white bread audience watching yes. community television, something vaguely ethnic. You know, it's white like if bread. I was Aboriginal, I'd come in like with tree grubs or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, just to excite everyone. So this is what Jews eat. Jews um, eat this secret food called matzo ball soup. And, um, How many balls in a matzo ball soup? I don't know. Lots of balls or nuts of balls? <laughs> the, 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 and I, I actually do this usually because it's basically pretty slack. Yeah. But if you have some non-Jew coming over yeah. for dinner... Like, I don't know what like, secrets went into it. Yeah, yeah, the, the fact that it's slack doesn't is kind of no. balanced out by the fact it's matzo ball soup. Yeah, exactly. You know, this isn't just, um, you and know, they would never be in a position noodles. to question it. Yeah, this isn't just magi three-minute noodles, but no, it kind that. of is. Uh, so what, what you have to do is... Scissors? Yeah, you need scissors. Yeah, yeah. If you want to know what matzah is, by the way... Yeah, what is matzah? When the Jews were going through the desert, you know, because the Bible's true. Yeah. When the Jew- Oh, that's right. When the Jews were slaves in Egypt... Yeah. And then they had to escape and go across... You know when Moses passed through the river with the big thing? I think I remember that. True story. The, uh, and they walked through the thing. Any, anyway, they had to basically get up and leave early and they didn't have enough time uh, for, the, for the bread to rise. No, rush hour in the morning. Yeah, so, <laughs> so they ate this thing called unleavened bread that was like, oh, because we were in such a rush. Yeah, you can't and even then, leaven shit. Yeah, and so this is like crumbed up version of that. So okay. that's the difference between... And, and, and you, you eat the matzah during this time called Passover, but you're allowed to eat it at other times and anyway, it gets complicated. Because this says it's not, you're not allowed to eat it at Passover. Yeah, this is really complicated for a uh, sort of like... Uh, but because there's other, it's just too complicated to okay. explain. Okay. But gen- generally you are allowed to eat it on okay. Passover. So you need four eggs. I don't, I don't think you should use this one. I reckon that one's oh. a bad one. Apparently, like, blood blotches aren't good. I could get that In out. In the egg, is that a blood blotch? I'm, I'm not, like, that thingy about it myself. What do you... But see, see, it's like a... It's like a little tadpole there. Yeah, this... But Maybe you need a hang fork. On, hang on, hang on. I've, I've played this before. You just got to really... Just got to really <laughs> break the membrane around it. Probably. There people, it is. People, That's the people blood People prefer a blood blotch yeah. rather than, like, yeah. our fingers now, in it. Now I've got nothing to wipe my blood blotch on. My mum would be very angry at what you're doing now because oh, you're she... supposed to crack it into a little bowl in case one of the eggs is off. Oh, yeah, I get it. In Good case point. one of them is too free range. The, uh... There's some more blood blotches in there, but I'm not going in. I went in for one. The, um, we can That's use... it. No, we can't use the scissors. <laughs> that won't work at all. 
I mean, we. I reckon it's just a natural. That's probably yeah, the free I mean, range part. That's probably exactly. just what happens when there's one chicken per square meter. I mean, I mean, we eat lamb, and you know, I don't understand if you're like. Yeah, but like, yeah, like this is yeah. a blood blotch is just like a, would, uh, a very small steak. <laughs> it, it's, <laughs> it's so like, annoying, okay, isn't it? But eventually, you're gonna whip it into meringue. <laughs> the other thing where. Like on the cooking show, you can do this 20 minutes later. No, no, no. I think that this should be shown in real time. <laughs> this is like we've come up with something more kind of excruciating for community <laughs> television than the goldfish cam. What was that? A, they, they used to, on community television, they had this thing called goldfish cam. Where it was is just, it like live chook cam? Yeah, I don't know what it is. It's just like a, a locked off shot of a goldfish and it's like when they had no shows to run. Have you ever well, heard about that? No, you, I haven't. Man, you got to learn about your community television I roots, man. Watch, I don't History. watch very much television. Uh, That's what community television used to be famous yeah. for when I was young. The goldfish. Goldfish can. It was it a whole <laughs> tank or just one picture of a fish? It was like a locked off shot of a goldfish in a tank. And and the fish swam around, right? Real old people watching this are like, ah, oh, they're, they're, oh, they're, they're like, ah, oh, mem memories. memories. Thanks, Safran, for I bringing up that, that memory. Show. I miss it. Do you reckon that's something? I reckon what? that I reckon that is whipped. You you really whipped it. Uh, okay, so we need this. Yeah, cool. So I did, that's I did fine. Indonesian at school, and all I remember is a tachakla talur, which is whip the eggs. That's all I remember. <laughs> that's all I can say if I go to Indonesia is make really specific orders. Why did you chefs. learn Indonesian at school? They made me. What school was it? A private school? Or? No, it was a public school. Oh, that yeah. was just the, the language that they taught us. Oh, fair enough. Okay, so we need did you, learn, did you lang do languages at school? We learnt French in grade six at Northbourne Primary School. What's whip the eggs in French? Well, I don't learn that. What we the only thing they <laughs> didn't teach you that. That's all they taught me. The only thing I remember we were smart Alex even back then. So we tried to this half a cup of water. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so. <laughs> We'd go into class and there was, have you heard of these Pink Panther movies with Peter Sellers playing Inspector yes. Clouseau, so he's yes. like a French guy. So we'd go into French class and ask the teacher to translate into French all these things that <laughs> Inspector Clouseau said in kind of like a French accent in the films. And one thing he did, because he, he does this joke in one of the films where um, there's this, this dog and he's going rah, rah. He's, in French no the dog's there and he's with a guy and and um and so he's spectacle so there a dog there and a guy and he, the dog's like rah, rah. and then uh <laughs> inspector Clouseau says does your dog bite and then the guy says oh no 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 and then um rah, rah. and then the dog bites him yeah. and then he says I thought you said your dog didn't bite and the guy says oh yeah, that's not my dog and then the guy walks off without the dog <laughs> But then, anyway, so we taught our French teacher to, to teach us that in French. What sort of dog was it? I don't know, like a German Shepherd or something. And anyway, so Tonchi and Escomange, which is does your dog eat or something approximating that. And that's the only thing I remember from French class. That's more practical it's, than yes. eat the eggs in Indonesia. It's, it's, does your dog bite? Tonchi and Escomange. But apparently people have told me it actually, I'm not even getting that wrong. And that, <laughs> that means does your dog eat? So now one cup of Snyder's coarse matzo meal. Okay. Um, How about, I feel like I've been fairly useless, so I'll hold it still. Oh. There, oh. And you have to say a Jewish prayer whilst this is happening. Not, oh. Not really. But I thought that would definitely make it more interesting. Yeah, you can. Baruch atah, I don't know. And this yeah, is that's like, tradition. This is like evoking a... Uh, a golem, a Kabbalah. It's like it's very important to, uh, yeah, to pray a, before a, the. A golem. Yeah, that's like a mud man. Actually, it is a bit like making a mud man to be. Uh, because actually, that's. I never thought about that before. Well, I just saw it there. I didn't know you meant to let, let it sit for 20 minutes, which just seems like. But it's almost I, as long as you've been mixing it for, though. Yeah, but I reckon we can fatten it up. We can cheat fattening it up by putting more. Uh, more matzah? Matzah. Like oh, that, 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 will, that will speed up it's really fattening. Okay. How are we going? That's good. Because you seem a bit. Yeah, no, that's good. That, that's good. No, maybe. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You sure? Well, we, I don't want to. 
Um, you, you don't and, want to mutter yeah, it out yeah, too much. Yeah, I don't much. want to anger the gods, you know what I mean? No, this is getting pretty thick. Yeah, I think we might actually have to rest it. I reckon there's a limit to how much we can just keep on pushing that in. There's, there's a limit to how much you, you might, can might, yeah, cut chocolate that to lure. Yeah. No, 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 we might have to just like let it rest. All right, we'll for, just like, let it like, go for, for a little bit. Um, all right, we're going to let John keep fondling his eggs and we'll be back in a bit with more Community Kitchen. The Villa's Arms Hotel with John Chef Fran. Uh, while our matzo balls are boiling away in their soup, I think it might be a really good time to talk to you about your new book. Yes. <laughs> You've just come back from Mississippi. Mississippi. From not eating matzo ball soup, but eating catfish. Really? Yes. What What is catfish? Tastes like like well, it would no, be yeah, just, fish, but you know it tastes quite a nice. A little bit like cat, a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit. No, no, I think it's called cat for some other reason besides it tastes like cat. But I don't know. It just, I think it's the whiskers, right? The scary yes. whiskers. I don't have such a subtle tongue, like subtle You've got a taste very subtle tongue. No, subtle taste don't put yourself that I can down. just describe like what catfish how it's diff okay. different to say like a hamburger <laughs> or a Mars bar or whatever. But I did, I did, yeah, I was writing a true crime book yes. in Mississippi, so I spent six months there following a, a murder that I was writing about. <laughs> I don't a know murder how much that I was know. witness uh, to. Yeah. No, I wasn't witness to the murder, but I knew, yeah, I, good, I, I knew the be... guy who got murdered. Yeah, because you, you met him yeah, before I met a, I, when you I met a before. Yeah, I met a white supremacist who was like 65 years old, ran a group, and then... I pranked him, and then he started legal action, so we could never put it to air, okay. and that was that. And then a year later, he gets murdered in his house by oh, this young black wow. guy. So I thought I have to go back and uh, investigate. And how did you negotiate, kind of, because it's a, it's a white supremacist? Yes. Like, who's, who's side? Oh, who, yeah. Because I feel yeah, like that, that would be difficult, because somebody murdered someone, and that is wrong, but someone was a white supremacist, and that is wrong. And how did you find your way between yeah, it was like, where, where your maybe literary sympathies might Yeah, be I know what coming. you mean, because like I went over there and like it would have been a lot easier if the story was this black, because one of the things was, was it self-defence? Mm. And then if it was self-defence, that would have made it really good for because I wanted it to be yeah, yeah. an easy story so, where like I'm on the side of the black guy and his family and they've been unfairly, yeah. he's been unfairly put in jail. And, yeah. But then I got there and everything was like messier and uh, like, it just wasn't like that. And it was messy. like really annoying. Like, like maybe he didn't have to kill the white supremacist. <laughs> maybe. Maybe, there, maybe was, like, there was another way. There was another way. Because one of the things... The game was, of chess. Yeah, the board's well, pretty laid out with <laughs> who gets which, which colour and just just play until the end, no matter. But then, Easy. like, one of the things was perhaps I was having a, re a relationship, like a consensual, where he, he paid the black guy as a rent boy. So that kind of got interesting. But then, yeah, then... It, I, I don't know. It just would have been better if I went over there with more of a bias, but I just... You know, like where yeah. I omitted stuff that therefore made the black guy look heroic. What did you omit? No, no, no I didn't. The, I the didn't. I'm just stuff. saying someone else would have gone over there and they would have been able to talk about like incarceration rates of black people and sort of like they would have made the story <laughs> more like what people want to read here in Melbourne in, in <laughs> North. Yeah, about the evil. What does this this fantasy writer who's making a better book than the book you've written look like to you? Oh, because like, in your head no. there's just this. Oh no, because for instance, if man. the killer's mother, like she was okay. a bit of a like I felt she was a bit of a bad mother, and they would have left that out. They would have gone, oh well, that's not what the story's about. And then the killer was a bit of a jerk, also. <laughs> Such and they, a jerk. And they they would have left that bit out killers. too, and just like left it as like this 
black guy, unfairly prosecuted. I feel like you've got some bizarre, like, parallel universe. Yeah. John Safran, who just goes and gets all the answers and... and yeah, no, it didn't happen, though. <laughs> But the book that was meant to happen happened. It's yeah, a good yeah, book. No, it's, it's, it's getting a really great response yeah, and everything. Yes, you yes, should, yes, yes. should not worry about the parallel version of what it could have been. Oh, no, I'm happy with the book. I'm just sort of yeah. saying it was like it did my head in you know, a bit. Like, then, then when I got back, I realised, when I started writing it, I realised it's good to have all this messiness. Yeah. Whilst at the time it was just excruciating. It's yeah. like, why can't this be simpler? Was it hard living there, like the culture shock? or uh, You are very busy working, so you didn't notice so much? Yeah, I'm a bit of a hermit in Melbourne. So mm-hmm. it just kind of like I kind of... Put that you over just carried your shell. <laughs> yeah, over to Mississippi. And then everything I was doing was working, which I found I socialise a lot well when I'm working, yeah. like if there's something to do. It's yeah. always when it's like, hey, let's hang out, but not for work. It's always weird. But if it's okay. like I've got a job to do, right, it's suddenly... Do you feel like you're not enough in a social situation? You <laughs> even have with to, my, no, even with my dad, there. even with my, my dad, when we interact, he's never like, hey, John... I'll come over and we'll have a coffee. He's always like, hey, John, I'll come over and we'll look through your receipts oh, so we can like work party. out your tax. Re- you know, and so that, that's how my dad and me interact. There's always yeah. some, like, work aspect to it. So that's the only way I can interact. Does it, how I wouldn't know how to have this conversation how- with you if we weren't filming it. Yeah, for of course. I, would just, I wouldn't know what, yeah, we'd just be there going, oh, We're talking about okay. catfish yeah. more. What, how often do you see your dad? Uh, you know, a couple of times a week. Okay, so so you have to have like a full itinerary of things to do. Oh yeah, like, like for how, instance, how, how, oh, okay. For instance, at the moment, I'm getting all the plumbing done in my okay. house. So now when we meet up, it's all about that. It's okay. like he and comes then, over when, when the plumbers. What happens after there. the plumbing? Oh, we have a bit of a, a chat, but then it's like, oh, listen, I'll be back, and you know. So your house is actually perpetually renovated. There's always stuff to do. Yeah. Okay. What are some of the the more extreme? people that you have met? Oh, well, everyone seems to like this guy I hung out with for four days uh, called Bob Larson, who was an exorcist. Oh. And, uh, and he, like, hit me with Bibles. And he, he, was, he was great because I could tell within one sentence of him talking that he was going to, like, make the story. Because it's yeah. always, like, quite stressful to go somewhere. You see it in his eyes? Well, or? no, just in the way he spoke. And, he, like, he had really... You know, he was really flamboyant, and the first thing he said was, like, mega offensive, which is, like, great for my show. It's so great. I'm always, like, looking for something so different to what everyone else is. Like, yeah. everyone else, like, for instance, I'm looking for people who are, like, who are heaps racist. And, like, I'm always, like, if I, like, go somewhere... I think I've been yelled at yeah. through a car by some of those people. You just, have to, you just have to go down certain streets and wait. No, they'll come, they'll come. So, I, sometimes I meet a white supremacist, but they've got some other agenda. Yeah. And, and like, they won't out and out... So sort of like say it, and I'm like, I'm always like trying to go, yeah, I'm trying to always trying to goad them into stuff, like just do, like, come on, man, like I'm Jewish, okay, or whatever, and it's like, and then they're polite. It's like this isn't going to work. Oh, I need you to be more offensive. I don't say that. No, I'm just like getting sort of like more and more bitter as the as they keep on going on and not saying racist stuff. Anyway, this exorcist, he was like heaps offensive first sentence, and what it, was his offensive first sentence? Well, you know, he just thinks people are possessed by demons, right? Oh, yeah. And everything, he'd keep on saying stuff. I couldn't, bel- I think he can't top this. Everything will be like more, like he can't top how offensive he'd be. Like, for instance, he'd say, he said something like about Muslims. He goes, uh, uh, you know, uh, Muslims uh, possessed by the devil. It's like, oh, he won't be able to top this. This is like, and he goes, uh, and that's why they do suicide bombings. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he just kept and on going. Uh, and he just kept on upping it, and he just could. And he goes, "Well, that's why you know I have to exercise them, and that's why I think George W. Bush is doing the wrong thing by trying to like go to their mosques and sort yeah. things." It's like, and it's like, and I'm wincing. What was the exorcism like? Well, he either hypnotized me or exercised me. Like he took, he'd take like twenty minutes, and he'd do all this kind of stuff with me. Oh, like, <laughs> And he had, a, he had like a ginger beard as well, and he was sort of like... That's had, probably where his had, power was. And he had like plugs and everything like that in his hair and stuff like that. So imagine me, but with a ginger beard, and he's sort of like going like okay. this for like 20 minutes. Ago. And, you know, your ancestors, they got... They got they picked up a curse because they left God's way and all this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so that was another heaps offensive yeah, thing he said, I which I couldn't that. believe. He said... He told me, this is like, you know, like people are usually quite awkward about bringing up things about people's families or whatever. It's like you don't say anything. This is what he told me. He said, uh, I have a demon 
because my grandparents rejected God after because their family was killed in the Holocaust. Oh, yeah. Like, can you imagine, like, a yeah. more offensive... And then he yeah, said to me, John, to get rid of the demons, you have to forgive Hitler. Like, what a... What a oh, what? wow. And, like, and everyone was, like, all wincing, like, the crew. Like, how offensive is that? But I was, like... It's oh, really God, offensive. You know, Hitler's gold. paintings are still under... Technically, under international copyright law. Oh, really? You can't copy them without paying some Hitler. Hitler royalties. <laughs> That's a fact. So you just can't... Be, it's, it's mostly pictures of dogs, too. Oh, yeah. That's what he painted. He just painted lots of dogs. I'm sure he could paint it better than us, though. Or me, at least. I, I don't know. I don't want to concede that to Hitler sometimes. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. yeah, he could paint a better dog than me. I could <laughs> paint a better dog than Hitler. But I can't. I can't. I can't paint a better dog than Hitler. We're going to take a break and come back with your delicious matzo ball soup and a song from Al Parkinson. Uh, you're watching Community Kitchen. Community Kitchen and today we're sitting with Al Parkinson. Um, we're going to hear a lovely song from you in a minute. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the music? Well, I'm going to play a song called The One That Got Away. And is it about a fish? It's not about a fish. Um, no. <laughs> I wish. I wish. No, well, we're going to listen to it. It's going to be really lovely and I really can't wait. And then I think we've got some matzo balls <laughs> yes. by John Safran's matzo balls. <laughs> No Thank you. Are these are these how they you wanted them to turn out? Let's not talk about that. Okay, okay. <laughs> Is this what they ate in the desert? Mm. Here's exactly what Mo Moses ate. Exactly what Jonah ate before being eaten by the whale in the Old Testament. Mm. Oh, that packet soup is really good. Mm. It's really good. <laughs> mm. It's really good. You yeah, like, never, never had them before? Them? No, never. No, you can do that, you finish all your soup, but not the balls. Yes. <laughs> so, the best of last, is that why? Or we just don't want to eat them? Jesus. Well, no, there was no particular reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're going to put me, like, that's give me an, eating, an eating this disorder. Is a, no, that's this is pretty hard. <laughs> I'm gonna like go on Instagram, look at the thin inspiration photos now. <laughs> well, because you're like you're no, it's just that a really wild. hard, hard hitting interview show where we want to know why you didn't finish your matzo oh, balls. Oh, you really want to know why? We, we left it on there for too long, so it like sucked, soaked up all the oh, goddamn soup. Oh, the truth comes out. They're pretty good though. Um, I've got a hair in mine. No, you there's, don't. Yes, there's I no do. hair in it. Yes. How do you know it's it not is. one of yours? It's, it's, it's okay, it's black not. and curly, oh fair my enough. God. Fair Everyone's enough. like suddenly like there's only this attack at the last <laughs> no, moment. It's not. Once you got the interview from me, now that suddenly no one's nice. Everyone's like, why is there this hair in this? Why is it? I wasn't complaining. I wasn't complaining. Well maybe we should leave uh Al to play her lovely song. Um thank you so much for coming no, with you. us and uh, making some more soup. Cool. Uh, we'll see you next week on Community Kitchen.
my sound check. <laughs> you got that in high depth. <laughs> Tonight's episode of Community Kitchen was proudly supported by the Builders Arms Hotel Fitzroy. 